This is episode 171 of the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today I have Markus Hoiga on the show. He is the managing director of Clean Canvas and we talk about how premium themes can supercharge your store. So let's dive right into it. This is the e-commerce coffee break. A top-rated Shopify growth podcast dedicated to Shopify merchants and business owners looking to grow their online stores. Learn how to survive in the fast-changing e-commerce world with your host, Klaus Lauter, and get marketing advice you can't find on Google. Welcome, welcome, welcome to, to the, the show. show. Hello, welcome to another episode of the e-commerce Coffee Break podcast. Today, we want to talk about a topic which we have not talked enough, it's themes. Basically, the core of every Shopify store is a theme, and a lot of merchants have a shiny object syndrome when it comes to themes, checking out new themes. But we want to find out what kind of theme actually will supercharge your store and increase the buyer's experience. And with that, obviously, sales and revenue. So therefore, guest on the show today is Marcus Sohiga. He is the a native of Ireland and the managing director of Clean Canvas. He's a supplier of premium Shopify themes. And prior to his role as managing director with Clean Canvas in 2022, Marcus was a senior theme partnership in Shopify for six and a half years. So definitely the right person to talk to. During his time there, he not only vetted new theme partners and new themes, he actively worked with theme partners to ensure they built the very best themes possible and thereby ensured an incredible quality level was maintained for merchants investing in themes from the Shopify theme store. We can't get a better person on the show than Marcus, and I would like to welcome to the show. Hi, Marcus. How are you today? Klaus, how are you doing? Thank you very much for having me here. Big fan of the show. Marcus, themes, as I said, is a core pillar of every store, and we want to talk about that. You have been with Shopify for a very long time, and you must have seen hundreds and thousands of different themes. What makes a good theme? That's a million-dollar question in a lot of ways. So much of it depends on what the merchant is looking for, the experience that they're trying to create. It does help to maybe dissect and drill down to what a theme has to offer a merchant on their store, that they can make an informed decision around what they're looking for. But as you pointed out, people sign up for Shopify. There's various sales channels there that they can operate within, the online store being one of the primary ones. And then a theme is essentially the face of the store. We'll get into to it, the fact that it's an awful lot more than that, but you have the platforms, tools, all the elements, but that's no good if you can't get in front of merchants. So obviously this is where the theme steps in, helps you wrap all of that power, plugs into all the functionality and delivers that then to a merchant and obviously then to the customer experience on the end of that. It's a complex interrelationship, I suppose, between themes and between the platform. This is something that tends to be overlooked a great deal in relation to an awful lot of the education and knowledge of merchants in using themes is that it's not just a template. It's not just a design element. It's not just a way that pre-formats existing elements. It's a vehicle by which the core Shopify features are delivered to merchants and to their users so all of that type of functionality, all of those type of elements, depending on how robustly and well integrated and well delivered they're in a theme, really dictates how effective a theme is going to be for a merchant using it. If I had to try and to distill it down into what makes a really good theme, there's a number of elements. The first thing is the appearance and the design, the aesthetic. You need to be leaning on people that have experience, that understand design. And I'm not just talking about basic web design or graphic elements or independent elements. Very nature of what speaks to people because it's that almost intangible element of creating experience. And that is done very cleverly through everything from use of fonts, white space, so on, and so many nuanced details. But we're like speaking from a clean canvas perspective, our designers have been working in this sphere for nearly 20 years. They've done print, digital, various forms of design, and an awful lot of it is specialized on both commerce and e-commerce. So having that sort of background and understanding obviously lends itself to creating an aesthetic and a design that a merchant would spend a fortune hiring an individual designer to create that. So the design aspect is one. The other then is reliability. You're going to need to know that the features and the elements that are built in there are 100% functional. Themes on the Shopify theme store, something that I was very passionate about while working at Shopify. I'd be the first one to raise the hand even while we were there and still to this date. There is very poor education around the value that merchants actually get from the themes of the theme store. The fact that all the themes going on there are vetted to make sure that all the core features work natively, perfectly out of the box. That's something that's probably not shouted about half enough. 
So making sure that you got that reliability and functionality. And then the final element on that, I'd say, is for want of a better all-encompassing term, the aftercare, having a highly educated support team, having the ability to rely on enhancements, updates, maintenance, bug fixes, all of those elements. That in itself is an entire industry in itself, let alone just something that's coming natively with a product from the theme store. Experience design, reliability of the functionality, and then an aftercare service. Those are probably the three things that I'd lean into. Now, merchants usually have a bit of a, a journey. When they start their store, most likely they will start with a free theme, specifically mm-hmm. if they're solopreneurs or dropshippers. Then at some point, they will go over to a premium theme on Shopify, a pre-made theme. And then finally, if the brand grows, becomes bigger, more professional, then they want to go for their own premium theme that is customized for them. You touched also on the aspect of support. And that sometimes is a problem for a lot of merchants. When something breaks, who is the one responsible fixing it? And how quickly can you get to the support? Now, when it comes to a custom built premium theme, there goes a lot of things into it. And I reckon a lot of merchants come from the side of you don't know what you don't know. So they probably do not even know what are the questions they have to ask when it comes to building a theme. How do you help with finding them the right track the right way? It's a difficult scenario because it's been a complex product. There are so many layers and there's so many potential areas that could be affected by conflicting code from apps or custom elements or even updates on browser compatibilities, device types, whatever. One key answer I can give to that is experience. We've dealt with clean canvas having somewhere in the region. I know it's well in excess of 80,000 merchants that have used our themes. So between that and the countless years, clean canvas are one of the longest standing theme store partners there. I joined the Shopify theme store 2010, 2011, thereabouts. Between then and now, you can imagine the amount of support tickets, various scenarios, issues, concerns, questions that have been raised. So we pretty much seen it all at some point or another. And I think that allows us to decipher or translate these issues when they come in from a merchant. I'm so exceptionally proud of the support team that we have because they're all ex-Shopify. They're all very experienced support people. The great thing for us is we can become such product experts in terms of our support. It almost becomes like a white glove support service to our merchants. We not only help decipher the issue for them in many ways, if it's not something that we personally can affect or resolve or assist with, we generally tell them to be able to point them in the right direction and obviously help them phrase what they're actually looking at in terms of the issue. It is so complicated and I do genuinely feel for not a lot of merchants because even going to Shopify support, there is such a huge platform and there's so much for these people to know. It is impossible for them to know absolutely everything. It might be difficult for the merchant to discern whether an issue is a Shopify related feature or a theme related feature, or it could be a custom coding element or an app integration. And I know a lot of the Shopify support people equally find that challenging to try and decipher that. So an awful lot of the time it lands on our laps because it's the one easiest sort of avenue to almost push it to because I suppose in terms of hierarchy or layers, there's the platform, there's the theme, and then there's everything else that happens to the store thereafter. So if the Shopify individual or support member, whatever, hasn't got the tenured knowledge or the experience to be able to find that complexity, we generally tend to be the next port of call. Okay, that makes perfect sense. So support actually is a key factor when you're picking your theme. You want to make sure that you can talk to someone and things go wrong. With all the themes that you offer, they're obviously all online shopping 2.0. There was this process about one and a half years ago, coming from the standard now to the new standard of Shopify. What were the biggest struggles for merchants getting through this kind of transition? I was there within Shopify when the actual transition was happening. I was also there when we moved to sections for the first stage as well. There was the old type of themes, which are very much a hard coded formatting. The biggest challenge I think for merchants was the fact because there was essentially massive change in the underlying framework of a theme to allow section speed across every area of the store. It really meant that they had to redo their content and the store had to be reimagined. The product pages were certain and suddenly had all these new tooling, these new elements, these new layout abilities, all these new feature ads. It was a case of basically them having to reimagine their store and rework it. There was no avoiding that type of a scenario because the content portability would never have worked from the old system to this. It was one of the biggest things that was needed in the online store was that versatility of components across all areas of the store. 
the lift for merchants was, I'm not going to call it painful. It was just a phase that they had to reimagine how the entire store was going to operate. Now, talking about supercharging your store and increasing the buyer's experience, what are the key parts that really make a difference when it comes to the buyer experience? Engagement is a huge thing. When a person lands on a store, they're making obvious relations with what they feel the brand is, the elements that are there. So it's all about capturing that engagement as quick as possible. I mean, within themes, there is obviously a finite limit as to what we can influence or present, but we do try and focus on making sure that what we offer gives the merchant every possible tool to try and capture customers within their focused area, subject to store size, et cetera. The user experience or the customer experience. We have a new theme coming out very shortly, probably within the next week or two called Enterprise. And we've heavily focused on the conversion and the user experience in this area, stuff that hasn't been seen on other themes in the Shopify theme store before. Things I know that one common pain point that we see with merchants is something that we can't really affect which is like the discount code. It can't be brought forward from the cart into the checkout because themes can't influence the components of the checkout area of Shopify. It's a separate area outside of themes. Plugging the discount code directly in there for our users was always that little bit of a pain point. So what we've done is we've integrated, for example, an automatic click button that just copies the code to the clipboard. So the customer can use that then at the checkout, minimizing the amount of effort that they need to do. But Things in terms of like transitions, animations, making sure that you're focusing on things like performance. All of these elements speak highly to ensuring that your customer really has a good experience on the store. We try and always balance every consideration for the customer experience and things like promotional aspects, conversion flows, load times, load speeds, nice interactive elements and experiences. Those are all critical. And so much of that stuff, I'm not going to say is unnoticed, but there's so much work built into that to making it look so natural. That's actually the difficult part. Yeah. Now, when a merchant wants to do a transition and move from one theme to another, there's a process in there. And you touched a little bit on that. What kind of timeline or a planning process would you recommend to a merchant when they go into a new theme? I suppose so much relates to the growth stage, where they feel they're going to be at and how much they can invest. And speaking on the investment point as well, with themes, I think merchants often may look at the price point, say $350, $320, whatever. Is this an investment that I'm willing to make? But they got to factor in what they get for this. They're getting a theme that essentially costs well in excess of eighty or $100,000 to develop and build. They're getting ongoing maintenance support, future updates, all free of charge as part of it. White Glove support service, should they ever need it. To even try and pay for that out in the wild, the value that they're getting from this is incredible. But in terms of allowing their setup from, say, a free theme into a premium theme status, the great thing is, if I introduce this from the get-go with themes, is that you have the free trial. You can literally install a theme and trial it for as long as you want while you're setting it up in the background. And during that time, merchants can reach out to us and ask us questions and ask for guidance. From our perspective, we try and make things as quick and as smooth as possible for setup. We're providing a huge amount of default templates for the product page so that merchants can immediately plug into these pre-formatted elements to make that launch all the more quicker. Things like compare pages coming soon, countdown timers, pre-order, et cetera. On average, what we understand from the start of a setup of a store to an actual launch with a full premium theme can be anywhere in the region from two to five weeks. But that's a rough approximation because obviously, as we know, stores vary so much in terms of content and elements that go into it. Okay. No, I think that's a good guideline. Two to five weeks gives our listeners, our merchants a good idea when they should really, or how much time they should put aside. Yeah to get this going. You offer quite a few themes. Are there themes that are for specific industries or niche verticals, or is every theme suitable for any kind of industry? This is actually something that was always a massive conversation point. It got to the stage of almost being like a philosophical debate within Shopify, as well as within theme partners is, can a theme be industry focused or should it be a one theme fits all or how does a theme speak to a certain format or business model? The long and short of the answer is there's yeses and noes in all of this. In terms of industry, I don't think there's any theme that can be specifically set to an industry. Any industry is going to need a certain amount of core features, but some in particular industries are going to need more nuanced or more tailored elements that speak to that industry. If you're selling food, for example, having recipes, you want an awful lot of return customers and retention and stuff like that. So like 
to try building the new email signups, promotions, the marketing is going to be a massive part of that. If you're a drop shipping store, obviously that's less important. What you want is just a large catalog that like literally displays a massive amount of products with the key details there and get quick to sale straight off the bat. While a theme can definitely build towards catalogs and business models, I think the industry element is a bit of a moot point. People can get misled thinking that they go in and they may see a theme on the theme store that has lovely dogs and leads and cats and whatever on it. And they go, oh, this is built only for pet stores. Not at all. What I would always recommend to merchants because the themes have a free trial is go in and test it, see what's in there and definitely reach out to the theme partners to talk to them because you need to know who's on the other side. You're investing in this element. You're going to be getting a product. You're probably going to stick with this theme, not because of the cost, because the cost I feel is, is very minimal, but because it does take a certain amount of work to set up your store around this. So you want this to be right. And it's good to get to know the personalities, the passion, the talent, and the experience that you're going to be working with behind the scene. With the release of Enterprise, we'll be the largest theme catalog holder on the theme store. We'll have nine themes. Our themes do vary in the sense that we have some that have a very conscious set of feature elements that tend to speak to certain types of business models or catalog sizes. For example, we have, say, Boost, which is a more playful type of theme. And it's really down to the designs, the animations, the soft rounded corner abilities, which of course you can edit or change. Beautiful gradient effects, all very smooth and fun to play with. Gives a really nice, engaging, playful experience for the user. Then you have the likes of Symmetry, which is our top selling theme. And that is very much this really high-end classical brand fashion style magazine store. But again, we've seen it used from high-end fashion brands to somebody selling those little widget spinner things that were a big deal. There's just a vast array. I think people need to use their imagination, but having a sense of your own brand and identity, as well as understanding what your catalog and your primary drivers should guide that. For example, Enterprise coming out is its large catalog, drop shippers, mega store, anybody with a really large inventory that's really interested in a lot of promotional aspects, a lot of really nuanced product descriptions and specifications and stuff. So a mega store type feel, whereas maybe the likes of our alchemy theme would be something that's more towards a smaller category and an awful lot more focus around larger, but maybe less amount of image or product assets. So it just depends on your business model and your brand aesthetic more than industry. Okay. That was a very good insight into themes. I learned a lot there and I have to update my theme as well. So I will definitely go and check your themes right. out. Where can people find out more about Clean Canvas? Just hop onto our website, our support site, one or the other. There's an option there to literally send us a direct message to our contact form. Anybody who wants to contact, you can reach me at marcus at cleancanvas.co.uk. I'm happy to chat to anybody at any stage about Clean Canvas. One point that I'd add in as well is that something that we haven't done with Clean Canvas before, but something that we've noticing more and more of by requests that we've had coming in, which is because so much goes into building a theme, because there's so much in maintaining, updating, constantly enhancing and improving and living with a theme. An awful lot of agencies and developers are opting to buy a premium theme and then customize that to an element for their clients' needs because they know that there's all this back-end element that they do not have to worry about. It's there, it's secure, it's in safe hands. So something that we haven't really done is expose too much of our inner workings, but we are with Enterprise is going to open a new era for us for exposing the various JS events and ways for developers and agents to hook onto our themes and build from them. We'll be putting out some technical documentation with it. We'll also then be interested in chatting to any agencies who are looking to do client work that would like to essentially have this exceptional benchmark to build from so that's there as well as the merchants. But feel free to reach out either of those ways. We're on hand pretty much five days a week. Okay, cool. I will put the links in the show notes and you just want to click away. And I hope a lot of people will just test your themes because they look really, really good. And I will be one of the testers. I can guarantee you. <laughs> we'll change that. Thanks very much. Marcus. Thanks so much, Marcus, for your Bye. time. And talk soon. Have a great one. Absolute pleasure. Take care. Have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And that's a wrap for this episode. I hope you found today's episode informative and actionable. As a reminder, we have a growing community of e-commerce professionals where you can share your insights, ask questions and learn from other merchants. If you're interested in joining, please visit our website at ecommercecoffeebreak.com and sign up for the community. And don't forget to subscribe, rate and review our podcast to stay updated on the latest marketing trends and strategies for Shopify e-commerce merchants. See you next time.